Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I did a video on this knife about nine months ago. This is the water knife. Uh, it's made by Camillus. A lot of people assume uh, that the water knife was uh, a name that Camillus came up with, but that is not the case. This, this was actually made by the water product company or made for the water product company by Camillus. And water product is really famous for making the water saw, which was a, uh, a folding saw. And the water saw still exist these days, uh, but this knife, unfortunately, does not. Um, it kind of went away when Camillus went away. Um, the reason these other knives are shown in that other video is because, well, these are all knives that Camillus also had made at one time um, using basically the same frame but different uh, covers on them. So you have the rocket knife here. This one here is a, a modern version of a Camillus knife. This is actually made by the Novelty Knife Company. But Camillus and both, well, both Camillus and Camco had made the uh, Lone Ranger Hyo silver knives. And this uh, actual frame is the same as what you have on the water knife. Um, something to mention for folks who have this knife and other people who have similar knives like this that have... Uh, there's always some kind of cowboy on the front and everything and you flip it over and you see the bullet in the middle and then you see the three dots and the other in the two dots what that represents is well lone rangers silver bullet everyone knows about the lone ranger and the silver bullets and this was the silver bullet knife and what the three dots here and the two dots here are is the the back end of a bullet so that's what you're seeing there that's what those uh dots actually represent and you will see this uh on several other knives there's like a gene autry knife like this and everything else but that's what those dots are all there for uh you should see five uh five circles which are the the ends of the shell casings and then you have the profile photo of the uh the bullet in the middle the, that's what that that's what that's supposed to represent in any case, this is very similar to the water knife and blades and everything else. You have uh, the uh, clip blade and the uh, uh, cap lifter screwdriver. And uh, you see the same thing here on this knife, the rocket knife, except instead of uh, having a, a clip blade, it has a, a spear master blade. But when you actually look down and look at the frame and everything, you start realizing very quickly that it is basically the same knife with just a different cover on it. Now, that's all fine and dandy. I've already talked about those in the uh, earlier video. Um, so why am I bringing out the water knife again? Well, it's because I finally got the Duratool version of this, the Duratool workhorse. Now, uh, and that is the third uh, knife in the uh, Duratool series that have the metal covers. And so I thought I'd bring that out and show it to you. Okay, at the risk of going into a very long digression, um, let's start off by looking at this knife. We all know what it is. It is a U.S. military knife or a MIL-K knife, uh, MIL-K818, I believe. Uh, also known as a milk knife, military knife, demo knife, GI knife, uh, whatever you want to call it. It goes by many names, and it's basically your camp knife made for the uh, U.S. military. First showed up in um, World War II, uh, big with the Marines, such as this one, U.S. Marine Corps. And if you notice, the original ones had a stainless steel outer layer. Uh, then you had a brass liner, brass spacer going on, carbon steel back springs, and carbon steel blades. Uh, so this knife has been around for a long time, and this type of stainless steel cover or scale, whatever you want to call it, technically it is a scale. It is also technically a cover. 
Uh, it's a scale because it's the outermost layer facing the blade, basically, and then usually you would put a cover over the top of that and you would have bolsters. But because uh, there is no uh, cover going over this layer, the scale, then technically this also is the cover of the knife. Um, do we want to go into that argument? Maybe some other day. Um, I just wanted to point out this is uh, these covers here or this scale is the, the type of material that you will end up seeing on the uh, Dura tools. Now, originally the Dura tool knives came out around 1988 and uh, they had these wood grain Delrin covers on there. And uh, anyone familiar with the knives from Klein Tool will notice that they had a very similar wood grain Delrin cover going on with them. And that's because back then uh, Camillus as well as other companies were making knives for Klein Tools and they came out with their own line of knives uh, and that were marked uh, Duratool. But if you notice these are not marked in any way Duratool and the uh, the tank stamp just reads Camillus. So for all intents and purposes, the, uh, the Camillus uh, Duratool knives looked exactly the same as the Klein Tool knives, and they had many similar knives that uh, you found in the Klein Tool lineup. The only main difference between the two was uh, Klein Tool versus the Camillus stamp. And so if you see a wood grain Delrin handled knife in like an electrician knife or something, most likely if it's got the uh, Camillus Tang stamp, it is a Duratool. This one happens to be a Barlow. Uh, with that said, uh, if you want to know more about all that, the Duratool line and all this other stuff, uh, go check out the earlier What a Knife video. I, I will link to it uh, in the description below. Uh, let's now talk about what we're here for, and that is the latest of my Duratool knives. Uh, and that is right here, the uh, Duratool Workhorse. Uh, and it's not a very big knife. It's uh, three and an eighth inches long. You got a clip blade that is uh, two and three eighths inches long with a two and an eighth inch cutting edge. Notice you've got that wonderful recurve in the blade, and that is the factory edge. That recurve was not caused by sharpening. That is the way the blade came. Um, Camillus, New York, USA. So it was made post, uh, what, 1998, I believe. No, post-1989. I always get that backwards. And then you've got the uh, the typical uh, cap lifter screwdriver going on there as the front blade. So very much like the what a knife over here. The only difference is you've got a clevis or a bale or shackle, whatever you want to call it, um, hang in there. And it's a really well-made uh, shackle. As you can see, this one is bent a little bit. Somebody has definitely bent it. I guess I could try and straighten it out, but I am not going to worry too much about it. Uh, wobbles really well, so that would be something to watch out for when you're playing with this knife you don't want that to happen and then close that blade wonderful half stop on the blade got a nice kick and then the secondary as you probably know is a cap lifter screwdriver so very much the same as the water knife in all shapes and forms the only difference is is you got the clevis added to it and uh, that was uh, the first of them the 326 also called the 326 BP. The BP stood for blister pack, but once you take it out of the blister pack or once you take it out of the box, the knives are indistinguishable. There is no difference between them other than the packaging. Uh, so this is basically a 326 at this point because I don't have the blister pack. Uh, the other knives uh, in the Duratool lineup, uh, in case you uh, did not see the other video and don't want to go back and look at it, you got the 327 or 327 BP Duratool Journeyman. And as you can tell, that is an electrician knife with the same uh, metal covers on there. And you got the same strong lock in the middle, the liner lock. The difference being because this is all stainless steel, instead of having a brass liner lock, 
you've got a steel liner lock going on there. You know, that would have been really cool if they would have put a liner lock on this blade for the uh, workhorse. That would have been fantastic. And finally, the last knife in the Duratool family of uh, stainless steel was the uh, the pruner. And this lived on. Uh, it became a knife uh, made by Smith & Wesson and then later made by Marbles. Uh, and that also has that uh, stainless steel liner lock going on there as opposed to a brass one. Very strong half stop on this one. And uh, this is uh, this one uh, showed up right around 2000 or so. And these knives uh, continued to be made. At least they were in the book for being made uh, by Camillus basically from uh, 1996 um, until Camillus closed. Uh, so probably up until about 2006, the Duratool knives were being made. But uh, they are becoming scarce and more and more difficult to find. Uh, matter of fact, it is much easier to find a water knife uh, than it is to find a Duratool uh, workhorse. And the Wada knife uh, will either have a uh, cap lifter screwdriver, they also have some Wada knives that have a secondary pin blade, and they also have some single bladed Wada knives that do not have, that only have the clip blade. So now I guess I need to go and find the other two Wada knives. But uh, thought I would show you this because I uh, finally got the uh, Duratool workhorse, a proper Duratool workhorse. Uh, so my Wada knife no longer has to stand in for it. And with that said, I guess I'll let you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, one final thought, and that is, uh, as we know, Marvels has already come out with the GI Hawkbill, and they have come out with the GI Knife, the GI Utility Knife. It really is time, uh, Marvels. How about consider bringing out a GI Electrician Knife and a GI Workhorse? We could really use them. I think that would be a great addition to your GI line of stainless steel knives. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.